Hello, Keith Rucker here at VintageMachinery.org. Guys, so today we are back to work over on the Big Monster K-Mill project. And today's project, what I want to work on is building a pouring mandrel to go on the top of this that we will use to pour the Babbitt bearings uh, to go in this machine. Now, a lot of times when I'm pouring Babbitt bearings, I'll actually use the shaft that we're going to be using as the mandrel actually pouring the Babbitt to fit the actual shaft. In this case, it's not going to be practical to use that big roller uh, for a couple of reasons, mainly because it's just so big and heavy, number one. Also, it's really wide. I need to be able to put some spacers in here to kind of dam that babbit in. And with the, the rollers coming in here and having a little bit of room in between there, it doesn't give me room to get in there and, and work to get those dams built. And then two on the uh, outside, because I have a smaller diameter that goes up to a larger diameter, again, getting a dam built there to hold the babbit in is going to be challenging. So what I've decided to do is to actually make a pouring mandrel for this. Now, the size of the shaft that goes through that big roller is five and a quarter inches. You know, the probably easiest thing to do would be to find a five and a quarter inch shaft and just... Uh, put it in here and use that whole shaft. But I don't have a piece of five and a quarter inch solid steel laying around the shop anywhere and I certainly don't want to have to go buy one, just use a pouring mandrel. So uh, we're gonna go at it from a little bit different, a uh, little bit different attack angle. What I have done is I've gotten some thick wall tubing that's five and a half inches in diameter on the outside. I've got two pieces and we're gonna cut a couple of pieces to fit in here in between these. I'm going to then uh, I, I cut some plate and I'm going to weld up on the ends of those. I'm going to drill a hole all the way through it. And I'm going to take a piece of bar stock and we'll turn on the lathe so that we can basically tighten it up. It's going to look kind of like an old barbell, you know, like for weightlifting, where you have the two bigger pieces on the end and it's being supported by that shaft coming across here. So um, that's kind of my plan today is to get that built. Once that is built, uh, I got to come up with my spacers to support the shaft and also to dam it up and then we'll be ready to actually pour these bearings. But first, let's build the mandrel. So with that said, you kind of see what I'm after. I think I'll sketch it out so you can kind of see it a little bit better and uh, we'll go from there. So basically we're going to take a piece of uh, tubing and I'm going to have two pieces of them kind of like that. I'm going to weld a little cap on each end, a little disc. I've already got these cut out. And then we will drill a hole all the way through that. And then I'm going to take a piece of bar stock. We'll cut a shoulder on there, cut that to fit in there. And then now on this end, we'll thread it, put a nut, thread it, put a nut, and tighten that up against these shoulders in here. And then we will put all this on the lathe and we'll turn these diameters in one piece on the whole rod. Uh, when it's all together, we'll turn that, that diameter so that it's the same on both sides. And then I can take that and use that as my pouring mandrel. Hopefully that makes a little bit of sense. Uh, that's going to be really the easiest way that I could go about to come up doing this and uh, uh, anyway that's what we're going to do so let's uh let's get at it so this is the thick wall tubing that I got five and a half inches in diameter I got plenty of meat here to uh leave me plenty after we turn that quarter of an inch off the outside um, and these are a little bit longer than what I need these were basically some cutoffs that I was able to get from a steel place here that um, didn't cost me an arm and a leg. It only cost me a, a, an arm. It didn't cost me an arm and a leg. <laughs> Heck of a lot cheaper still than buying a piece of solid stock. And um, also got these little discs uh, cut out on plasma. We'll just weld those in place. Again, we'll drill a hole. These need to be cut. They're too long right now. Uh, we'll cut them to the length we need and um, then we'll make our bar to go in between them to hold everything in place. So I think first step is uh, I need to get these cut to length and uh, then get those uh, end caps welded on. I'm over at the marble saw and we're going to cut off a piece seven inches long. I almost could get two of them out of one piece, but they're not quite long enough and I wasn't able to get them any longer. These were just, like I said, some drops. I'm having to work with what I got. 
Hopefully this will cut right through there in just a couple minutes. We'll uh, get the other one up here and do the same thing. First cut done. Set up for number two. All right, I got these cut the length in. I got my disc, uh, I just wire wheeled them and cleaned them up. They are ready to weld on. I need to put a cap on either end and uh, we're just gonna weld them in place. I'm just gonna probably just tack them in three or four places. Don't need a huge gorilla weld on these, just something to hold them on there. I will probably wanna take these off at some point. So we'll make it as easy as possible. I'm just gonna use the MIG and uh, we'll do this. All right, that's one side, flip them over. All right, that should be all we need. Well, all right, you can kind of see what we're going after here. I've got these just kind of sitting up on there right now. Um, these are obviously we got to turn these to the right diameter. And but first, what we need to do is get the holes drilled in these so that we can have that shaft that connects the two so they'll be in line with one another and uh, go from there. So let's uh, get these over at the lathe and figure out what size hole we need in there and get that drilled in. All right, we're over here at the lathe and I got my part just uh, mounted up in here. I, I just kind of bumped it around a little bit where it didn't have much run out in it. We're gonna turn this true so I'm not worried about it being perfect but I want to get as much run out as I can. And we're gonna just drill a 3 8 inch hole all the way through to start with. I'm gonna drill a one inch hole on one side. Probably gonna to have to do the other one by flipping it around uh, just because uh, I don't have a drill bit long enough to go all the way through one inch. So let's uh, fire up and get her done. Starting here with a center drill to spot the center. Just uh, putting a little dimple in there to get my drill bit started. 3 8 inch drill bit, and we'll just drill through this uh, plate on the end. Now I've got a long 3 8 inch drill bit, and we're just going to go right up through there and uh, drill out the other side. That should hopefully keep us lined up on center there. through. All right, I'm going to do the same thing on the other piece. Actually, before I do, let's go ahead and put the one inch hole on this side. All right, one inch drill bit. I've slowed my lathe down to get my speed down. And we'll go ahead and drill this one on through. Now drill this other side, I'm just gonna come over here to the radial drill and we're just gonna find the center there and drill out right on that. So, we'll uh, just kinda get our drill. Get our drill where we want it. So we'll lock everything down. And we'll just let that drill through. All 
All right, we'll do the same thing again on the other side. So next I need to make my shaft that's gonna connect those two pieces. And I've got a piece of inch and a half stock here. I've cut it off to 49 inches, I think is what it is. And uh, we need to start working on this and getting this trimmed down. Again, we're gonna turn it down to one inch where those pieces will slide up into the, to a collar here. We're gonna thread part of it so that we can put a nut on there and tighten it up. Uh, but before I can do that, I need to put centers on the end so I can properly support it. Right now, I've just got it supported by the steady rest, uh, but we wanted to have this between centers to give us maximum support. So I'm gonna come in here, we're gonna face off the end, put a center in, then I'm gonna flip this rod around, we'll do it on the other side, and then we'll get set up with a center on the end and uh, turn our uh, piece down here like we need it. All right, we are supported by our steady rest, and I'm just gonna come in here and face this off. And a little bit more, I think that's got it there. We're gonna come in with a center drill now and put a center, this is what will, that uh, center support will actually go up onto while we're turning the end to give us maximum support. Probably still gonna use a steady rest just because it's so long, but uh, we'll have this in the end to give us uh, maximum support. All right, I'm gonna flip the rod around. We're gonna do the exact same thing on the other side and then we can start uh, machining those ends. Well, I decided that as long as we're set up on this end, just go ahead and turn this down before I flip it around. So again, I got supported by the center down here. I did go ahead and just leave the steady rest in here. And this will kind of give me a little bit more support. If you get a long bar in here sometimes, you get a little harmonics going on, a little vibration. So if you have something to kind of damper that out, it tends to help. I need to turn this down to one inch, down to 12 inches off the end. And I got a line down there kind of going to where I need to go to. Let's just uh, go ahead and start turning this out. All right, first pass, let's uh, see where we're at. I'll put this measurement in the digital readout so we can uh, go from there. So that must have been, well, that was inch and five eighths. I thought that was inch and a half. So we're at 1.505. Okay. All right, we're going to one inch. So um, I'm just going to turn this down. See, we'll take 200 thou off in a pass. All right, this should be our final pass to get us to one inch mark. So, uh, hang on a minute, I need to tighten up that. Let's try that again. There we go. I want to check that diameter since I moved that tail stock and this is my final number make sure I'm where I need to be and it's actually showing oversize still I'm just gonna go ahead and cut it out and then we'll come back and make one more pass to get us to our final sneak up on that last dimension what had happened was was the tail stock had gotten a little bit loose so uh, when I tighten it up, it, it just changed the dimension a little bit because it moved that stock over just slightly. No big deal. We're still just fine. This needs to go down to roughly three quarters of an inch. This is not a uh, 
precision measurement just to give us some clearance for that nut to flip up over. Let's try this again now. Let's see if we can get it on there. Just gonna slide her up on. Yep. It's uh I think it's going to go up on there fine. I just need, I'm going to have to bump it in place. Um, but I think I'm going to go ahead and thread it before I bump it up on there. So let me go ahead and get this back off. And we'll thread that part. I'll come here and touch off. And we'll do a test pass here. Not right. Let's see. I put it in eight. That's the reason we do scratch passes right there. I had put it in the selector in for eight threads per inch, but I forgot to move my settings from I was on what BC and I was I need to be an AE so I was actually doing 16 threads per inch instead of eight threads per inch so um, let's try that again but because I did the scratch pass no harm no foul not gonna hurt a thing let's uh, do another scratch pass now and double check myself again that looks more like it Of course, I can't tell which one's what. I'll just go ahead. I'm pretty confident we're in the right place. That is eight threads per inch. Okay. Put a little cutting oil on there. Do a test fit here. Yeah, it's going to fit up on there just fine. A little bit on the tight side, but it'll work. Let's try this one more time. Put our nut up on the end here and that will tighten that in place i'm not going to go ahead and do all that right now but you can kind of see what we're doing i'm going to do the exact same thing to the other side of this shaft uh, get these properly spaced and uh, i think we'll be ready to turn the od on these to get them to the proper size for the mandrel i pulled this out and we need to flip it around to do the other side now on this one, I need to basically turn the, the other end exactly like I did this one. And I need to have a certain space in between the two. So I've just taken a tape measure. This needs to be 25 and a quarter inches. I put a mark down here where that needs to be. And uh, we'll go ahead and get this chucked up. Now, because 
this end is now a smaller diameter. It will actually fit up into the, the tube up through the headstock, so I can actually pull this in a little bit closer, which should help things out a little bit, make things a little bit easier to do. But I'm gonna have to move my steady rest in the process. So I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of get that all the way up in there. There's my mark where I need to turn to, and we'll slide our, our steady rest down and get set up where we can, actually I'm gonna leave it right here right now because I need to face and put a center in this end and then we'll move it down um, where it needs to be to do our turning. All right, we'll get this second side done. I'll probably just go ahead and do this one and bring you guys back when it's done. You've already seen the process. Right, we got that turned. Let's uh, see how well it fits. This will be our test fit here. Going up on there, good. Oh yeah, nice. All right, I'll go ahead and get a lock washer and put on this end. Slide that up on there, and our nut. Tighten up on. We get a wrench to tighten that with. That one is on. Let me get the other side on and I think we'll be ready to turn the diameters on the drums. And I'm probably gonna do that over on my bigger lathe, uh, I think is what I'm gonna do. Well, here we go. Just uh, mocking it up here. I've still gotta turn the outside diameters of these, uh, the tube into the actual diameter that we need for the mandrel to be, to pour against, but uh, I just wanted to do a test fit, make sure everything's looking good, and it does. I I'm happy with how everything is looking here. Um, this is, I think, gonna work out just fine. I can handle this by myself, don't have to use a crane or anything. It's heavy, but it's manageable. You know, this was five and a quarter piece of solid stock. Obviously, we'd be working with the, the, the crane over here to handle it, but this is gonna be fairly easy to deal with. All right, uh, let me figure out what the diameters need to be on these. Um, I need to just go double check it. I think five and a quarter if I remember right, but I'll double check that. And we're gonna get this set up over on the Big Monarch lathe, I think, to turn these. And we'll do it all in one setup um, where it'll be true with one another. That's the nice thing. You know, I could have just done this as two separate pieces, but there was no guarantee they'd be aligned. This way we know they're aligned with one another as if it was a solid shaft all the way across. All right, let's uh, get finished up on this and we'll have this knocked out. All right, we're over here at the big Monarch 28 inch lathe and uh, getting ready to get this mounted in here in the chuck. We'll get it between centers, get it all hooked up here and we'll be ready to turn this out. So. I'm just using my three jaw chuck on this end down here and we'll put the live center in on the other end to support it. And hopefully be able to get this knocked out. You guys, I got this thing mounted up over here. Again, we're dialed in with a three jaw chuck on this end and we're on the center on the other end. And I don't know exactly what's going on, but there's some bend in this somewhere and it's got some run out in it. Let me show you what I got. If you look down here on this end particularly, you can see it moving around a little bit. This main shaft is running true down this end, it's running true down on this end, but it's almost like it's got a little bend in it down here. So what are we gonna do about it? Honestly, guys, I'm not gonna do anything about it. It's not gonna matter for what we're doing. Yeah, it's ugly, but this shaft serves no purpose other than to support the two ends. And as long as we're running between more or less centers here and I turn the diameters, they're gonna be in line with one another. The center part here may not be, but the two pieces on the end will be. And that's all that matters is that this thing is straight along this shaft, not down here. And I got enough material that we can turn that run out out. So uh, that's what we're gonna do. Uh, we're gonna get in here and get these ends turned down. So let's just do it and get it done. All right, I think we're ready to start here, turning these, and like I said, I'm not happy about that run out by any means, but it's not a deal breaker. We can work with it, hopefully. Let's uh, 
make a light skim pass across there. It'll take a little bit to kind of get that run out kind of turned out. We'll get a measurement. We're taking these to four inch, 260 thousandths, which will be just a little bit bigger than the uh, journals, uh, which should make it go together real nice. I think that what happened, and the reason I'm getting this run out is when I welded these plates on, they were not perfectly flat. What I should have done was face those when I had it in the lathe. I think that whenever I clamped it down because they were off a little bit, it kind of caused that piece of steel in there to bend just a little bit. Again, um, what's important is, is that this outside diameter be uniform all the way down. It's not going to matter that I got a little run out in the shaft, so uh, we're just going to roll with it, make the best out of it. Uh, it'll be fine. So let's go ahead and we'll take a couple passes here and get this cleaned up, and we'll uh, get them both turned to the right diameter, and I think we'll have our turning mandrel done. It's getting a lot of uh, chatter on that first pass there, so I actually changed cutters to a little bit different profile insert and uh, also sped the lathe up and slowed the feed rate down a little bit and it's hard to tell right now but it appears like it's cutting a lot better than it was so hopefully I'll make an improvement. We'll take a look at it after this pass and try to get a measurement see if we got enough turn run out out that we can measure all the way across and then we can kind of start shooting for hitting that actual diameter that we're going for here. Well, as often seems to happen, we've gone to plan B. Um, I was just getting way too much chatter over there, and basically what was going on is this shaft was just shaking too much, and I really needed to get some support on it. So I brought it back over to my smaller lathe because I have a steady rest that I can put on this one. I don't have a steady rest for the big lathe. Actually, I do have one, but it's, it needs some work. It's not where I can use it right now. So uh, I set back up over on this lathe, and this does appear to be working a lot better. Uh, I'm able to take some of that chatter out um, and still not getting quite the finish I want, but I'm playing with my speeds and feeds until, and I'm getting better as I go. So I, I feel like we're gonna be able to get the job done here, but I'm gonna finish this up over here on uh, this smaller 16 inch lathe with the steady rest. Having to make light passes though. It's gonna take a little time to get there, but we're gonna get there. I'm on my last pass on uh, this side. I'm only taking about five thousandths off and I've got it slowed down considerably. And so far we've been getting a pretty good finish. I've kind of found a, a zone here with speeds and feeds that seem like it's working all right. So I'm hoping that when we get through with this last one that we've got a good finish on here and we can move on to the other side. Uh, but. It's been challenging. I've been having to really play with things and I haven't shown a lot of that. But sometimes you just have to get in here and you have to play with your settings and just find the right speed and feed where the harmonics work into your favor. And it can be challenging sometimes. Uh, but if you play around, you can usually, usually find that sweet spot. And I'm, I'm hoping that we did. We'll know when we get through on this last pass uh, and take a look at the finish. Well, I got this side pretty well turned down to size. Um, it's a little bit of a pattern in there, but it's, it's pretty smooth. I mean, I think this is gonna be just fine for what we're gonna be using it for. I'm gonna have to scrape those bearings a little bit anyway to get them in, but it's uniform and it's gonna be good enough. It's gonna be good enough for a pouring mandrel, so uh, we're good with this. Well, as is often the case, uh, this mandrel is proving itself to be a little bit challenging, but we're gonna get it. We're gonna get it knocked out. Um, this end is ready to go. We've still got to work on this end. This is the end that I had started over on the other lathe and quite honestly, this one was being really misbehaving and uh, it actually gouged it a little bit there on the end when I was getting a lot of vibration when I decided to make the change. I'm probably going to end up welding that up because I think it's going to be down below the surface in a couple, of, just in one little place. I'll show you that when we get to it. But. Um, 
all in all, uh, we're going to make it work. Like I said, I think this is going to be just fine. I am out of time for the day. I got to get this video edited and get it put up. We've still got to make the spacers to hold this together, uh, finish this one over here. So that's going to be in an upcoming video, a separate, separate, separate video to this one, kind of finishing this project up and getting this manual rated for pouring. Uh, but yeah, come along for the ride guys with that. That's uh, it for today. As always, thanks so much for watching. Please do subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Those thumbs up and comments are always greatly appreciated. Hit that bell icon up there to get notifications when new videos are posted to the site. And as always, a big, huge thank you to those who support the site financially through Patreon, PayPal, etc. Really, it helps me out and enables me to be able to take the time and uh, share with you guys what's going on out here in the shop. And with that, we are going to sign off. We'll catch you on the next video again. Thanks for watching.